popular misconception is that dwarves are part of a uniquely European folklore. This video debunks the notion. Dwarf tribes were part of everyday life to the Native Americans. In the process, we learn many other things forgotten and buried in the sands of history. The classical European image of dwarves in fairy tales showed them wearing pointed caps, having pointy noses, and often carrying a belt of tools or tote bags. But the image you see here is not European, it's Mesoamerican. It's labeled a Mayan limestone carving and dated to 600 to 900 AD. Mainstream archaeologists claim that these fellows were attendants to the king and suffered dwarfism. The mythology of Native Americans does not mention an illness called dwarfism. The recorded oral history of natives from South to North America say, at one time there was a race of dwarves with their own kingdoms, tribes, and families. The best book on the subject is American Elves and Encyclopedia of Little People by John Roth. Even though it was published in 1997, I found no trace of the book in shops or online. Bookshops were unable to order it for me. I drove 300 miles to one university library that stocked the book. There, I photographed its 329 pages. It's from this book that I take some of the information for this video, the names of the native tribes and dwarves, but not the images and additional info. This is a painting of an Abenaki couple from 1750. The Abenaki are natives of eastern Canada and Maine. These red-skinned Indians are really white-skinned, both today and hundreds of years ago. They tell of bygone days in which there were dwarves two feet tall, with uncombed straight black hair to below the waist, called Alambiguino Seas. There also roamed the Bakwiji men, now called Pukwajis, a word for shape-shifting dwarves. Shapeshifters are a common feature of native legend. Pukwajis were people of the forest, later becoming spirits in the forest. A transition in vibratory density. Both Abenaki words for dwarf contain the word we, as in Bakwiji men, and Alambeg we know, which is ancient German for small, modern German, wicked. The ancient English term, we, as in a wee bit, has the same meaning. Unlike other tribes, the Abenaki thought the dwarves were generally friendly and allies to taller humans. The giants, on the other hand, called Gawakwa, were man eating monsters and foes to the natives. Some Algic tribes, natives of Canada, call their dwarves Pakwatsinins, a word meaning little man of the woods. The Mi'kmaq, Ojibwe, and Malisee tribes used this name and also other ones. A more malicious dwarf was called Maskadisikak. Dwarves of mischief were named Mimegwi. There's that, we, sound again. Here's a drawing based on descriptions of the Mimegwi. There are the woe dwarves called wise ones, the first people or the previous people by the Yurok and Nadine tribes. The Wogue have long fingernails, slanted eyes, and long white beards. Their wrinkled skin is white or blue-black. The Wiat tribe calls their dwarves Wijidokawak. The Wiat say that the Wijidokawak dwarves were the first people made by the Creator, and that they are physically very strong, even though their height is no more than two to three feet. The Karuk natives of California spoke of a dwarf people that shot deadly flaming arrows. They called them Omaha, poorly translated as Creek Devils, and Rachni Yuma. Rachna is ancient German for mound, and Homa means upstream. The dwarves were named by the locations they were found, mounds and rivers. The Yurok people call the dwarves Saitel, and remember them as small people with long pointed heads and long mouths. This is an 1800s image of some of these red Indians called Yurok. The three ladies on the right have a vaguely Asian look to them, while the ones on the right could easily be taken for Europeans. My reason for pointing this out is that it doesn't match the Hollywood and academia narrative. Another name the Yurik gave the dwarves by was Helku, a word that doubled as mountains. The pronunciation of Helku is Helka, which is ancient German for the land of hell, which according to ancient German and Norse mythology is the subterranean realm. The association of dwarves with inner earth is the same in Europe, Africa, Asia, and anywhere else the dwarves were known. An ancient Arafo people lived in what is today known as Colorado and Wyoming. Their dwarves were cannibalistic. They called them Hansasitihi, Hesiziatihi, apparently pronounced Hechesitihi, and are described as swift, strong, 
muscular, ugly and dark-skinned. They had childlike voices and uncombed, matted and dirty hair. The Shoshone ancients of the Rocky Mountains, called the Dwarves Nimeriger and Weimaragar and Ninibi, translated as People Eater. Pictured here is the San Pedro Mountains mummy, discovered in 1932 below a cave in Casper, Wyoming. It was discovered by New Americans buried deep underground, but cited by natives as an example of an Ameriger. Dwarf skeletons were commonly not just found but rather dug up, perhaps pointing to disastrous upheavals in days of yore. The Mohegan tribe was settled in today's Connecticut. Their little people were called Mukiawizug or Makiawisag or Makiawizag. Wiss's ancient German refers to people of knowledge, shamans or sorcerers. Some also call them Makawis. Maka means creators. They are two feet tall and knowledgeable in herbal healing arts. According to the Cherokee of Southeastern USA, the little people, under two feet tall, are handsome men and women of white, brown, black, and golden skin. One class of dwarves called rock people steal little children. One name for them is Tsundajwi, who scoop out nests in the sand and line them with grass. As previously mentioned, the ancient German word for dwarf is Y, pronounced we. The word Sundage is German for sinful, so it's sinful dwarves. The Cherokee also knew them as little red men, mountain fairies and Dedzidin, who lived in caves and deep inside mountains. Tales of villages and mysterious, ever-glowing lights inside mountains abound. The image is Kalima ceramic figure, dated to 400 BC. It's reported that some dwarves went to live with and work for the humans. A strange group of dwarves called Thunderboys wore red and purple pointed caps and ate their meat raw. The Thunderboys were well versed in herbal medicine. Many dwarves were said to only come out at night because the sunlight was too bright for them, being accustomed to subterranean life. The little people enjoy drumming, dancing and ball games, and played with the children of the Cherokee. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. I've split this into two or three parts because it was too long and I didn't want to take up too much of your time. If you find this video interesting, I look forward to seeing you in part two.